Hello. Looking again at my analog project, the ETI vocoder. Um, let's look at the power supply for it. So for these filter boards down here, um, they're all connected with these JSTs to this printed circuit board. And my master switch, I suppose it is, um, plugs into this six-way socket there. Now that's being fed from these two sodium ion battery packs. Um, but I did notice, well, firstly, I was a bit nervous about the amount of uh, potential current that these things can provide. So I've put some fuses in here. Um, these are basically this sort of mini uh, vehicle fuse and I've got little one amp uh, fuses in those. So yeah, I wanted some fuses, so I put fuses in the red wire. Now the other thing is I noticed that these packs were sort of draining down at different rates and I had no way of sort of measuring them voltage wise in use. So I've put a couple of these little voltage monitoring devices on there. Let's get in a bit closer. So here they are. They're these super thin little PCBs with a sort of, um, I don't know, front cover on them. And they tell you the pack voltage. Now they don't measure individual cell voltages. Uh, you can get those, but uh, these are just pack voltage. And they also give you a little five LED um, graph thing there. Now they have built in profiles for lithium NMC, also lithium ion phosphate, also lead acid of various voltages. They don't do sodium ion, but they do have a sort of set your own top and bottom voltage profile, which is what I'm using. So I've set it eight volts at the bottom, 12 volts at the top. So the five dot indicator says it's fully charged. It's over 12 volts. Uh, so that's showing that it is full. And I've got one of these on each pack. So that one is at 12.3. I've charged them both up. So let's connect these to the vocoder and see how quickly these start going down. So the way I connect this is just to get this PCB and shove it in this socket. And uh, that puts power to all these boards. There are no LEDs on these boards, so you don't really... You can't really see that they're powered up. Or actually, maybe you can. Let me get my thermal imaging camera. Uh, one thing I noticed is that the VCA chip here, this LM13600, gets quite warm. Um, but with the thermal imaging camera, I noticed that these two 1K resistors, this is two VCA chips, there's one on either side of the physical package. So these two 1K resistors are also getting pretty warm. Let's go thermal. So yeah, looking at these boards in the thermal camera, you can see that the, uh, oh, where is it? Where's my, oh, it's over here. Um, yeah, the VCA chip there is kind of warm, but the hottest point are these two resistors down here. Uh, 41 degrees on that one. Let me get the macro lens. So now with the macro lens, uh, you can see those two resistors are at 43 degrees. That's pretty warm. And the chip above is at 38 degrees. Interestingly, these um, transconductance op amps have no resistors in them. They're purely current devices. So it's only transistors and diodes. Now the chips uh, further up are mildly warm 30 degrees but not as warm as this transconductance op amp and its associated resistors so in terms of the circuit diagram this is the transconductance op amp now it's high impedance current output is here pin 5 that simply goes to a 100k log pot that then feeds back into pin 7 and between pins seven and eight is just a Darlington driver. Now, to me, it looks like if the output of this thing is at half uh, level between plus 12 volts and minus 12 volts, then you've essentially got 12 volts across a 1K resistor um, down to this minus 12 volt rail. So 
even if you've got like one volt peak to peak movement on that, the average is naught volts. So you're going to constantly have current of 12 volts in 1K. Well, that's 12 milliamps, isn't it? I think that's 12 milliamps. Yeah. And of course on here, there are 10 of those. So that's 120 milliamps of quiescent current even without this thing doing anything that's quite a high current draw i mean in effect this darlington driver on the output i think that's kind of a class a amplifier isn't it so that at its zero point state there is half the current draw of when it's at its maximum voltage yeah that's quite a lot of current anyway this bit of the project is turned on so all of these chips are warm down here yeah they are warm um okay let's turn on my power amplifier nothing coming through there let's turn on some power to the other part of the circuit so i'll turn that on and that turns on the uh carrier signal yes the carrier signal um so that's going to put power once my supercapacitor charges up i get some really interesting effects actually by having that supercapacitor because gradually the power or the voltage on these uh, two boards <laughs> comes up really slowly and so things fire up at different stages first this bar graph comes on and you get some of the green leds on dim what's the voltage on that oh i haven't turned it on i thought i'd turned it on it's on now so they'll come on dim then the microphone preamp comes on and those leds go off and then the noise generator starts working but these tone generators don't seem to power up until the voltage is quite a bit higher um, so the tone generator comes on a bit afterwards it's not meant to happen because this was never intended to have a supercapacitor powering it but it is quite interesting uh, here's another one of these little battery monitors um, it's actually a j oh i think that's an x JX4615N-A3, that's the circuit board. There's a little microcontroller programming point there. Um, and then all that you've got on the front is the five LEDs for 20, 40, 60, 80 and 100%. A button, a clicky button. And then the sort of three digit seven segment display for voltage but i've got some more and more or more of these on order so um i fancy pulling one of these apart and seeing what's on there it's going to be lots of leds and a microcontroller and a single push button oh and you can program this tell it what chemistry you're using how long the backlight should stay on and it even has a calibration section but it's a one button programming interface <laughs> so it's all a combination of short press long press horrible things those are but yeah they're quite good these and they're very cheap they're like a um, couple of dollars each ah so i don't know whether you saw that where's my pointer pen um, well i'll use my finger but you can see that the uh, green leds are now partly on at 2.3 volts um oh i ought to get oh and that's just bounced i ought to get the microphone and plug it into the microphone socket now until these green leds go off the LM3915 uh, LED driver thing chip hasn't properly uh, turned on, so this is not fully functioning. This red LED should not be on on the uh, excitation board either. Uh, so nothing will actually work at the moment. If I talk into the microphone, yeah, there's nothing coming out of my speaker as yet. So I'm still waiting for that supercapacitor to come up in voltage now of course the supercapacitor is directly feeding the five volts of this uh, ppm circuit but it's also feeding two switch mode step up um, well one step up and one invert uh, power switch mode power supplies which are generating the plus and minus 12 volts on this thing so the plus and minus 12 volts are sort of gradually increasing like that but uh, nothing will actually burst into life until it gets to a certain point now the keen-eyed amongst you i don't know how many of you are that keen-eyed may notice this extra socket here um, which is an input which you can mix in with the noise generator there's no noise on there yet and the tone generator so if both of these are turned down 
then you will get this fed through and I've got it coming from something I bought at great expense but I wanted right from uh, well some way back in this project which is a chord generating machine so it generates a sequence of chords so I will power that up next yeah I think we're on the verge of this stuff firing up because the supercapacitor kind of charges up and then it kind of hesitates because I think some of this circuitry just before the point of it bursting into life starts drawing more current and it takes a while for it to get past that threshold and kick this circuitry into life this was never meant to work like this but it's quite fun playing with it so that's what it's doing now still got that red light on that needs to go off oh we missed the big click uh okay so why can't i hear anything i don't know oh maybe because i'm not speaking into the oh that's very quiet why's that so quiet oh yeah oh i don't know what's going on here but the microphone signal is not terribly loud i think there might be something wrong with this plug maybe it's down this end no this should be louder than that uh let me play with this and see what's wrong with it yeah i don't quite know what was happening there it's some sort of um something with this microphone switch there but it works in all positions no, i'm not talking this microphone it works in all positions so i don't quite know why it was hesitant but maybe it gets into a sort of mid state Anyway, that's working now. So let's, now I'm going to put my headset up near the speaker because I can't be bothered to set up the, um, uh, the sort of uh, mixing of all the signals just for the moment. So I'm not sure how this is going to sound, but here's the noise. That's the noise generator. Now have I got enough vo uh, volts for the tone? That's the tone generator. Yeah, that's working fine actually. But now I've got another source, which is this. Which is the chord sequencer. So that's generating a sequence of four chords. Uh, uh, I can tell you which chords they are. That's chord two, that's chord three, and on to chord four, and then back to chord one, chord two, chord three, and then on to chord four. So I've now got a choice of carriers of the chords. Turn that down. The noise source. Or the tone generator source. Uh, that's a bit high, let's turn that down. So yeah, that's the tone generator. So that's where the project is at the moment. Now, just a few other things um, on these speech filter boards. Oh, and uh, there is something else, actually. I have actually now built speech filters 2 and 13. Now, there's nowhere to put them because the speech filters start here at 3 and go up to 12. But the whole point of building these was so that I could um, move all these speech filters up one position and then put another speech filter at the top. But you can see that I'm using different capacitors for these. This is a 47N and a 100N, but these are multi-layer ceramics, so they're much smaller than the capacitors that I was using on these boards. And that's because in this position, these two capacitors, the green one there and the green one up on end here, were blocking these two potentiometers. And I am now starting to um, work out how I need to adjust these four pots on each speech filter uh, because there is a whole setup procedure for this but I will have to come back to that in a subsequent video and so just to wrap up that business of the negative rail having a 1k resistor down to it I would have thought the negative side of this power supply would have more current draw than the positive side so these have been on about half an hour now Let's see where we're at. Now this I think is the negative one because it goes to that side. So this one is at 12.1 volts and the pause one is at, oh, maybe there is more draw on the positive uh, power supply. I thought the negative one was dropping quicker than the pause one 
but that's saying 12.0 and this one's saying 12.1. Well, I'll have to leave it switched on for a little bit longer um, so that I can see whether that is consistent. But anyway, that's kind of it for this video. So cheerio.